The word Gola refers to the language, culture, and people of African descent of the sea islands of um, Georgia, South Carolina, and Northern Florida. Today, the Gola people are descendants of former enslaved Africans with the most remarkable connection to the rich African cultures from which their ancestors were stolen. The Gullah people, unlike anywhere else in North America, have managed to hold on to the traditions that their ancestors brought from Africa. How did this happen? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee so we can continue to bring you this series. Subscribe and turn on your notification buttons so you know when we have new episodes. Of course, share our videos with all your contacts. The majority of the enslaved people who ended up in the Sea Islands of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Florida, were taken from amongst the Wolof, Mandinka, Fula, Baga, Susu, Limba, Temne, Mende, Vai, Kisi, Mele, and other areas which had the cultivation of rice as one of their major crops. Others were also brought from the Gold Coast, Calabar, Congo, Angola, and other parts of West and Central Africa. As such, some of the infamous last places that encaptured Africans saw at the beginning of their enforced transatlantic voyage were Wida, Lagos, Aneho, or Little Popo, Grand Popo, Agoi, Jarkin, Port Novo, Badagri, Burns Island, Elmina Castle in present-day Ghana, and others depending on where they were captured. Well, for those of them who ended up in the present-day United uh, States of America, at least for the majority of them, the first site of their landing place was somewhere in the islands around South Carolina, Georgia, and North uh, Florida. To them, the landing ports in these places represent the equivalent of the Ellis Island with the exception that the Europeans who landed on Ellis Island, chose to go to America, unlike the Africans who were captured and torn away from their motherland. Some slaves were also brought in to the area um, where the Gullah people are presently found as a result of the little studied uh, movement of slaves from the Caribbean to the sea islands. This is important to note in any study of the Gola, uh, of the Gola culture, which is a rich mixture of cultural retentions that came with the enslaved uh, people directly from Africa, as well as the rich way in which their culture has been influenced by cultures that went first to the Caribbean and from there to the Sea Islands. As I um, explained earlier, Gola refers to the language and cultures of people of African uh, uh, descent in the Sea Islands. They are also sometimes called Gola Gichi people. Some scholars believe the word Gola comes from Gola which they say might be the name of one of the places that some of the enslaved people were taken in Africa. The word Gichi, which is often added to Gola to describe them, is said to come from the name of the Ogichi watershed 
in the Osaba Island, an important location in the, uh, to the Gola people. The Osaba Island was initially set aside for Creek uh, natives by English colonists, but soon became a plantation with enslaved laborers. And by the early 1800s, it was a highly profitable sea island cotton plantation. After emancipation, some of the freed people from this plantation left Osabo to join other Gola communities. The area in which the Gola people found themselves was unique in the sense that the sea islands consist of several low flat islands in close proximity to the South Carolina and Georgia coasts. While they were ideal for farming, they were also malaria infested. This made it difficult for the white colonists to stay there. So they set up absentee plantations instead. They did this um, believing that the enslaved people, being African, could better survive malaria, having been exposed to it in Africa. In essence, what this meant, though, was that the number of the white colonists and plantation owners remained small, while the number of Africans there continued to increase. Also, because of their knowledge of rice culture back in their homeland, the Africans were set up to work relatively independently in the southeastern coastal area to produce rice, a commodity which they very quickly turned into huge profits for the slave owners, so much so that it was known as South Carolina gold. The coastal isolation of the islands also allowed the, continu uh, uh, allowed the uh, continued importation of Africans who continued to be sold to the Sea Island coast even after the official end of slave trade and up until as late as 1858. By the 19th century, the number of enslaved black people inhabiting the islands had grown to over 90% of the entire population there. So this allowed the Africans to retain most of their culture. It also made them develop their own language, which is quite unique to them. The existence of, a, of Gola as a language is because Africans from various language groups were brought together in the relatively isolated areas and without a language in common, they evolved a new language. The language which they uh, developed was made up of some words which they brought from their various language groups mixed with some English uh, words. However, unlike some other Creole languages, the Gola language, especially a version of it that is known as Deep Gola, is quite distinct from any language spoken anywhere else in the world. According to Lorenzo Turner, an African-American linguist, in his book, Africanisms in the Gola Dialect. The Gola language consists of identifiable words from Wolof, Mandinka, Bambara, Fulani, Mende, Fanti, Edo, Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, and many other Bantu languages. When the U.S. Civil War began in 1861, the Union blockaded Confederate shipping, which made white plantation owners, who were mostly already absentee owners anyway, to abandon their plantations. By the time the Union soldiers arrived in the Sea Islands, 
They found the Gala people who were eager for their freedom, were also ready to defend the lands which their owners had abandoned. Many Gala people were some of the earliest to volunteer for the Union Army and they served with distinction. The Sea Island were one of the first places in the South where slaves were freed. After the Civil War ended, the Gullah's isolation from the outside world increased in, in some respects. A series of hurricanes devastated the crops in, 18, in the 1890s, and the rice planters on the mainland, who had uh, chosen to stay on the mainland, gradually abandoned their plantations and stayed away from the area because of labor issues and the damage done by the hurricane to their crops. Uh, however, free blacks were unwilling to continue working for plantation owners in the dangerous and disease reading rice fields. So left alone in remote rural areas of the low country, the Gola continued to practice their traditional cultures with little influence from the outside world well into the 20th century. So apart from their language, the enslaved Gola people worked rice fields in an African manner using African style baskets and fans to process the commodity. They also used baskets to carry goods in the style which is common in Western and Central African cultures. They produced um, cold pottery and household items that are identical to those produced in West Africa. Uh, uh, scholars who have studied the Gullah Geechee culture have also found that they have retained African traditions in child naming and funeral practices, which uh, their funeral practices starts with the, the announcing that someone has died um, through drums. They have extended family uh, systems and they raise their children communally, because people from the same family continue to live close to one another even after they, they got married and start having children like most African communities. Even when the Gala adopted Christianity, they infused their worship with their African heritage. The ring shout, which is one of their spiritual practices, has been traced to Central and Western Africa. Uh, practices, uh, participants in the ring shouts danced in, in circles to the rhythmical pounding of sticks. And then at the culminating moment, the experience possession by the Holy Spirit while shouting expressions of praise and thanksgiving. It, it, this is something I'm sure that familiar to um, most Africans uh, because they're similar to traditional worship uh, systems. The Gola retained a rich collection of animal fables with such trickster uh, characters like Bray Rabbit, Bray Fox, Bray Bear, Bray Snake. The animals in these, their stories, usually have distinct human personalities. Now, this form of storytelling, which has also been retained in most Caribbean cultures, are typical of Anansi and the tortoise stories found in West Africa. A quick word here about a website that we have created for you to access Afrocentric stories, nursery rhymes, African history, and biographies of great Africans and other Afrocentric resources for children. So parents and early childhood educators can access them um, at nanadecare.org. We created nanadecare.org so that our children 
can learn about the wealth of their heritage from a very early age. Back to the Gola Geechee culture. The Gola Gichi have many retentions from Africa, like the wide range of artworks and artifacts in distinguishably African styles that can still be seen in museums in South Carolina and Georgia, such as um, the wooden mortar and pestles, clay pots, calabash containers, baskets, palm leaf brooms, uh, drums, hand-woven uh, cotton cord cloth dyed with indigo, and so many others. In modern times, the Golagichi have continued their carving tradition in the form of um, walking sticks, beautifully decorated walking sticks, quilts organized in strips like African uh, uh, cloth, and finely crafted baskets. The, the Gola diet is still also based to some extent on, on rice, reflecting the rice coast origins of many of their ancestors. Examples of their traditional dishes are rice and greens and rice and okra, similar to Sierra Leone's uh, plasas and uh, rice and okra soup. Um, the Gola also make red rice which is often served with a gumbo containing okra, fish, tomatoes, and hot peppers. The red rice is, of course, very similar to the popular jollof rice eaten all over West Africa. In some remote areas, the Gaulas eat a traditionally made boiled corn paste served in leaves similar to agide, another West African meal. Some also eat a heavy porridge of wheat, which is like um, our fufu in Africa. Unfortunately, in spite of the fact that they were freed earlier than most, and also the fact that they owned most of the land on which they had been enslaved, the American system has so weaponized poverty against them that today the Gola landscape is changing. Condos, golf courses, holiday resorts predominantly owned by wealthy white investors have replaced most Gola communities. Most of these investors exploit loopholes in a system known as hairs property. The origin of the hair's uh, property goes back to in, in Gola history. As said earlier, the Africans quickly outnumbered white slave owners. As such, after emancipation, most Africans chose to remain on the land on which they had labored and toiled. Some of them took over the land which had been abandoned by plantation owners and others were able to actually purchase the land. Over generations, the land was transferred from some family members to other relatives within the families. Now, one of the loopholes of this system of passing on land within communities is similar to what operates in some African communities where land is held communally. So while the hare's property also refers to land owned in common by all on the land, regardless of whether they live on the land, pay the taxes, or have never set foot on the land, historically, hare's property owners were either routinely denied access to pay for legal services, Sometimes they simply did not understand how the legal system worked. As a result, large parcels of land passed down through the generations of Gala people without written wills were also not probated within the legally stipulated uh, periods. So this has made it easy for corporations, sometimes colluding 
with members of the community to acquire the land cheaply. Thanks for watching. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee so we can continue to bring you the series. Subscribe and turn on your notification buttons if you have not. Don't forget to share our videos with all your contacts and please keep those comments coming.